Hi. I'm not a big fan of physical therapy because physical therapy tends to tighten the muscles and most people that have pain have muscles that are too tight already. So physical therapy has very limited application. It's for people who maybe broke a bone, were in a cast, lost uh, muscle strength, and they need to build, rebuild muscle strength, okay? I recently lost uh, 40 pounds, and I don't want to freak you out, but if I took my clothes off, you would see that I have a little bit of sagging skin. Now, it's far less than it was a month ago. I'll tell you why, because I started doing exercise, and I'm building the muscles, and so it's filling out that loose skin. So there are appropriate uses for building up muscle, especially people over the age of 45 get what's called sarcopenia, where they have muscle loss. So exercise is important, but if you have an injury, especially if you have a repetitive strain injury like carpal tunnel or plantar fasciitis or heel pain, you don't want to tighten the muscles anymore. You want to relax them with what we, I think we have it shown later, uh, stretch exercises, which I don't call stretch exercises because you're not stretching anything. So conventional physical therapy, which most medical doctors will prescribe for any kind of physical problem, is usually inappropriate. It's only appropriate if people need to rebuild muscle strength, uh, maybe because they had uh, an injury that's resolved. In other words, a broken bone that's healed. If you have a repetitive strain injury like carpal tunnel or something like that, then this would be contraindicated. <clears throat> so, uh, you know, if you look at number four, physical function, that's what I'm trying to say, that the function of the body affects the functioning of all the organs. So if you have bad posture, that's gonna put pressure in certain parts that may put pressure on the nerves and create a change in the nerve flow, which then can affect these organs that we showed you. All right, now this is a kind of conventional chiropractic, acute, uh, chronic, and long-term support. And it may or may not be appropriate. I know a lot of chiropractors uh, like to do what they call report of findings, and then they tell people they have to come three times a week for uh, the rest of their life or something like that. Uh, we don't do a report of findings in our office, and we don't do care plans. I, I know this probably sounds crazy. We don't do care plans because I don't have a crystal ball. I have no idea how long it's going to take for someone to heal. That lady that came to me last week, her boyfriend brought her in. We got rid of the headaches and went to visit. So, you know, maybe she needs to come back to be rechecked in a couple months. She doesn't need to come three times a week and have all kinds of modalities. People with acid reflux, usually uh, we want them to come maybe once a month to make sure the stomach stays down. We don't tell them three times a week. People that have heel pain, very often uh, one or two visits, they have dramatic results. Frozen shoulder, what is frozen shoulder? Can anyone tell me what a frozen shoulder is? I mean, I know some of you know, you just, it's when you have limited range of motion in more than one direction. Most of the time it's tight muscles. You know, you're trying to lift and this muscle here is keeping you from lifting. So it's usually a muscular problem. We work on the muscles by pressing on these tight spots and holding them for five, 10 seconds, maybe do some stretch exercises. Usually in one or two visits, we have dramatic improvement uh, in frozen shoulder. It's the same thing with heel pain. People tell me, oh, that's a heel spur. No, it's not the heel spur. The heel spur is not the problem, it's the result of the problem because the tendon is pulling out of the heel so the body puts a spur there to try to keep it in. Just like if you had a tent and you put the stake in and it starts loosening up, you'll put some more rocks or something there. And the proof of that is, is people tell me usually they feel a lot better after they get up and walk around for a while. Why? Because when they're sleeping overnight, the muscles tighten up and then when they try to step on that foot, they go from plantar flexion to dorsiflexion, that means the calf muscle has to loosen up. It's not loosening up, so it pulls on the Achilles tendon and then you have the heel pain. Then after you walk around a while, the muscles loosen up a little bit, then you have less pain. So that shows that it's really tendonitis from a tight muscle. What we have to do is work on the tight muscles and show them stretch exercises. <clears throat> All right, so you, you, know, you have uh, acute stage of an injury and these are some of the symptoms, redness, pain, inflammation, et cetera. Now, of course, some conditions are uh, long enough that they might need repeated visits or treatments or supplements. 
Uh, I'm not a big fan of rice. I, as I say, I didn't, I didn't put this presentation together, so I'm just kind of winging it. Because uh, I, I don't know that ice is a great idea. It works sometimes, sometimes it doesn't. You shouldn't do ice more than 10 minutes every 30 minutes anyhow. And then compression, most of the time, is a very bad idea. I'll tell you what happened to my friend Barb. Barb and I were at a friend's house, and then when we left, we were walking through the parking lot of the apartment building, and she was walking between a car and the back of a truck, and she didn't realize, because it was dark out, this truck had a trailer hitch that was low to the ground. It hit her leg, she fell over, hit her knee on the pavement, and her knee blew up within a couple minutes, looked like a volleyball. So she wanted me to take her to North Hills Passivan Hospital. We went there. We went in the emergency room, and I guess I made such a ruckus they kicked me out. So I sat in her car, <clears throat> and about an hour later, she comes out, and she's wrapped up like a mummy with ace bandages from her foot all the way up to her groin. And she said, they, have, they told me I have to stay wrapped up like this for a week, and I'll be swollen for a week. And I said, you know what? They're right. If you stay wrapped up for a week, you'll be swollen for a week because this is going to stop the circulation. Take that wrap off. And she listened to me and she took it off. The next day the swelling was almost completely gone. So there's three things in being a practitioner. There's knowledge, there's aptitude, and there's experience. Now, one's experience is going to be based on their knowledge. If you don't know how to fix something, you're going to think it's unfixable. That's why people go to medical doctors. They'll say, you have to be on this drug the rest of your life. This is incurable. Learn to live with it. Learn to die with it. Because they don't have the answers. They don't have the toolbox. That's what we're trying to give you here. Our tools so you can effectively correct problems by addressing the cause. And then there's aptitude. Now, you, you, know, you can probably learn certain things even if you don't have an aptitude for them. But there is a certain amount of aptitude, and that's why I said before where I think some medical doctors aren't too smart, because there's a thinking process involved. <clears throat> a lot of the things I figured out, like thyroid problems, that one of the doctors here was asking me about, where, where is he, the guy that was talking to me about Hashimoto, was that you? Yeah. Hashimoto and uh, Graves' disease. Uh, you want to look at T1 and T2, because that usually has something to do with the innervation to the thyroid gland. Let me give you an example of that. I was taking a seminar in Gonstead technique. Some of the chiropractors in the room know what that is. And this was a doctor from Alabama who came up to Atlanta. And there were some students, but mostly doctors there. And somewhere in the middle of the first day on Saturday of this two-day seminar, he noticed that one of the doctors had a very enlarged thyroid gland, a goiter. And he brought the man up. The man said, I've had this for years. I'm taking Synthroid, blah, blah, blah. He did an adjustment in front of the whole uh, seminar, all the doctors. The next day was Sunday, the second day of the seminar. The guy came, and guess what? the swelling was at least 50% smaller overnight by correcting the flow of energy to the thyroid gland. Now, if you go to an endocrinologist, that's a specialist, right? But I said specialists are not experts. Well, they know about adjusting the neck or upper back to correct thyroid function? Of course not. I was on an airplane. Now, I, I have a lot of air miles. That's why uh, I get away with traveling. And I was sitting next to a guy on this plane, and we didn't talk the whole plane ride. And then about 10 minutes before we landed, I started talking to him. I found out he was a medical doctor. I found out he was an endocrinologist, someone who specializes, among other things, in thyroid. How many people have heard this story? I hope I'm not boring people. Have you heard this story about this doctor? No. Oh, Michaela has. All right, so <clears throat> the staff has to suffer through this multiple times. I noticed the guy had a full head of hair. So I didn't want to threaten him, so I thought, well, we'll start with hair. Now, you know the joke that God only created a few perfect heads, the rest he had to cover with hair. So I learned that from Dr. Pygott, who was one of the early researchers in fish oil. 
Anyhow, this guy had a full head of hair. And so I started talking to him when I found out he was an endocrinologist that I had a lot of people who were bald and grew their hair back because I diagnosed that they had an undiagnosed underactive thyroid and I put them on iodine. And he says to me, what's iodine got to do with the thyroid? As God is my witness, he said that. What's iodine got to do with the thyroid? He's an endocrinologist. I said, well, have you heard of T4 and T3? He said, sure. I said, what are they? He said, they're two thyroid hormones. I said, what does the four and the three stand for? He said, I don't know. I said, it stands for the number of atoms of iodine. Wow. This is an endocrinologist. <laughs> Learning this from a chiropractor who's about one rung lower than a cockroach on the medical scale. You know, we're the dumb guys that if we were smart enough, we would have become medical doctors. I used to have this heckler who would call me on radio. I think he must be dead now. Some patient came and said, oh, that guy, he lives down the street, and when he's drunk, forget it. Because the guy used to call me up and he'd say things, well, Dr. Weiner, why are you going to the Taylor Alderdice High School reunion if you didn't graduate from there? Well, Jim, I was invited. That's why I went. So anyhow, one day he calls up, and he mentions about a colleague of mine who's a chiropractor who did all these online courses and then had to do an internship or residency, whatever, and uh, I think internship. Uh, he was becoming a medical doctor, and I know the reason why, because I know this doctor well. It's basically so he could get more insurance reimbursement, <clears throat> because I think he's very anti-medicine himself. But it was the status and also uh, improving his income, which already was astronomical. He says, well, you're a very smart doctor, Weiner. Why don't you become a medical doctor? And I said, that's the answer, Jim. I'm smart. <laughs> now, I don't mean any offense to the medical doctors here, but why would I want to learn to, uh, you know, what would be the main advantage of becoming a medical doctor, aside from insurance reimbursement, would be to be able to prescribe drugs. I'm not interested in prescribing drugs. People have enough of that. And if I feel they need drugs, I send them to doctors like Dr. Carey, who has you know, foot in both camps and understands holistic as well as the conventional. So this endocrinologist is a specialist, but he's not an expert. He didn't understand that you can improve thyroid function by giving the nutrients like our iodine plus that has four ingredients. It's Lugol solution that Dr. Used to, Dr. Gerson used to put on all his patients. It's two forms of iodine plus selenium and L-tyrosine. Anyhow, so we're back to this. I guess that was a great digression. Uh, and, and incidentally, fibromyalgia, now this is a term that just became popular in the last 25 years. Fibromyalgia, people have pain all over. A lot of those people have underactive thyroid. And as I often say, if it looks like a duck and quacks like a duck and walks like a duck, that's probably not a hippopotamus. If they have hair falling out, they have trouble losing weight or they're gaining weight, they have weak fingernails, they have dry skin, maybe elevated cholesterol, uh, trouble concentrating, low energy, they probably have an underactive thyroid. And the blood test is not reliable. We're not treating blood tests, folks. You can have a normal thyroid panel and still have underactive thyroid. And that's why we put together the iodine plus. But anyhow, we get back to uh, injury. And of course, your ability to heal from an injury has something to do with your nutritional status. Uh, when I broke that wrist, uh, the bone healed in two weeks. The doctor was amazed. Of course, I'm a vegetarian and I was taking uh, SuperCal Plus. All right, but I, I'm not a big fan of compression. I explain that to you. Now, chronic means this thing's been going on for a while. And, uh, you know, these symptoms are, I mean, there's pages and pages of symptoms of chronic problems from a physical injury. And a lot of people are put on antidepressants. How many people have noticed that? That your patients, they have a pain problem. The doctors haven't helped them with the pain problem and they put them on antidepressants. Who, who's seen that? I mean, I should think all of you have seen that because I see that all the time. Don't you, Dr. Heinemann? Now they've got a new problem because how are they gonna get off those drugs? Or they're put on opioids and now, of course, they're recognizing this serious addiction to opioids like oxycodone. I mean, this is a big problem that we have in the United States. So we got, they're treating the symptoms, and then of course there's always treating the patient like the patient's an idiot, and they're just malingering and making up stuff, which we uh, see very often. 
Uh, if the doctors can't figure it out, they think the uh, patient's making it up. What, 30 minutes left? Or? Okay. <clears throat> All right, now we have some other exciting things. We have this thing called a micro mini, and we've had Dr. Epitropolis uh, come up to Pittsburgh a number of times. I believe we have information on our website with Dr. Epitropolis, and there's videos. This is a diagnostic tool as well as a treatment tool, and we've had phenomenal results with this instrument. Uh, doctor's cost, I think, is around 100 bucks. You can sell it to your patients or do little treatments with them. Uh, it's handheld. I mean, it's, it's, it fits right into the palm of your hand. And it's a micro, this is similar to a, an acupuncture treatment without using the needles, actually. You're stimulating acupressure, acupuncture points or acupressure points electrically. Okay, so we have these devices available and they don't require a lot of training. Uh, you, you get a little graph of the hand and the feet and everything, which shows you some of the major points. We do have the videos, and then Candace and some of the other staff members can always train you on this. So this is something you need to consider, even if you're not someone who deals with physical medicine, because this actually deals with a lot of health problems, like erectile dysfunction, for example. So it's something that all of you uh, should consider getting. The long-term support, how are you gonna stay healthy? I have a patient who's a lifelong smoker. And in the last year, her teeth are breaking off, her crowns are falling off, she's had all kinds of dental problems. She's gone to, I think, about eight different dentists in Pittsburgh. She just went to Boston this week to see Dennis up there. She texted me this morning, another crown broke off. She's a vegetarian, eats a pretty good diet. What's going on with her? She's a smoker. She smokes, I don't know, a pack or two of cigarettes a day. I, I can't go to her house. I helped her out once because she's an artist and she had lent me some paintings for her office and I went to take them back with her. And I got in her house and the outgassing from all the accumulated smoke that's in the furniture and the carpeting, and, and I, I couldn't handle it. I was getting a splitting, splitting headache almost instantly. When she opens up her van, if, I'm, if she's buying supplements and I uh, put the, you know, the containers in her car, same thing, the, the car is just reeking of cigarette smoke. Cigarettes destroy your ability to heal and they cause bone loss and gum loss. These people need to be on Ester C+, they need to be on coenzyme Q10. Uh, this is not gonna totally offset all the damage because obviously uh, cigarette smoke has its own problems. Anyone know the temperature of cigarette smoke? She said 425, I've heard 450, but you can bake a cake at 425 or 450. So when you're inhaling smoke, you're baking your lungs, you're burning your lungs up, let alone all the acids in there and the nicotine and everything else. So this is uh, you know, the reason why she's having all these dental problems, even though she eats a good diet, is this smoking, and all the dentists have told her that. All right, now let's get back to pain and swelling. Now, I said we want to get to the cause of the problem, and as I gave you out that handout on food allergies, that can be a major reason why people have inflammation uh, trauma to the body can cause inflammation. So these are stop gaps, but they're important stop gaps. Maybe I should have brought um, some of the articles. Uh, Mikey G, uh, who's probably the rep of most of the people in this room, gave me an article on the hazards of painkillers. Uh, people are taking pain, Tylenol. Tylenol will stop your liver detoxification and can kill you Let's say you go to New Year's Eve party and you have one glass of wine, but before you left home, you had a headache or you had joint pain and you took a Tylenol. You might die at that party because that small amount of alcohol will be totally toxic because it'll shut down your liver's ability to detoxify that alcohol. And then we talk about opioids. A lot of people are addicted to them. Uh, many of these uh, painkillers cause stomach and duodenal ulcers. They cause uh, mineral depletion. I mean, just amazing 
So we have some natural things to help people with palliation of pain. We have the X-Flame, which has a patent ingredient. In fact, I think this afternoon we're going to get into some patent ingredients. It's called Crescelazine. Jamie discovered this product a few years ago, this ingredient, and it's in the uh, X-Flame. Now, the only caveat is that it may thin the blood a little bit. So if people are on Plavix, Effiant, Coumadin, Xarelto, uh, Pradaxa, Eliquis, then X-Flame might not be the right choice. So X-Flame, as long as they're not on an anticoagulant or blood thinner, you know, if they're on an 81 milligram aspirin, maybe they can take it. If they're on 325, probably not. How about this fad of taking aspirin? I, I had an aunt who used to take bottles fill, and no one ever told her to do this. She just said, oh, I heard it was good. Aspirin uh, depletes your body of vitamin C, just to mention one thing that it does, uh, let alone burn a hole in your stomach and cause ear ringing and all kinds of other things. So uh, we have a number of articles at the office, and we do invite you, as Jamie said, to come to our office. It's about a two-minute drive from here. Uh, you pull out of the parking lot of the hotel, and you make a left, and at the bottom of the hill, you make a right, and then you make your first left into our parking lot where the split rail fence is. And we'll be there after the seminar. If you want to come, we have all kinds of free literature you can pick up, and then you can make copies and pass out to your patients or frame it on the wall. We have all kinds of information on the hazards of aspirin, uh, hazards of uh, various types of medications, including uh, the uh, pain kills, uh, painkillers that I talked about, cholesterol medication. We, uh, we have the forms for vaccines. Vaccines are not required to go to school in Pennsylvania. Uh, we have the forms in the state law. So anyhow, if someone's on anticoagulants or blood thinners, we would recommend the inflame. Otherwise, give them the X-Flame because it has that added ingredient, the Crescelazine. Otherwise, put them in the Inflame. And then we have the Tincture. Now, some people don't want to swallow pills. So we have the liquid Tincture, and it absorbs fast. And then the Muscle Lax, which I've mentioned repeatedly, to make sure they have the minerals so that the muscles don't go into contraction. These are uh, must-have products in your office. You cannot sell stuff if you don't have it. Now, we had one client a couple years ago that got a very big order from us, and a couple months later, they sent it all back. They said, we can't sell it. What it was is they forgot what it was for. Because I'm sure in that two months' time, they had a lot of patients that would have benefited from the products. They just weren't thinking about it. You know, they're used to whatever other products or no products or whatever they were doing, whatever protocols. And so you have to like get this in your mind. Now we have these things called Wellness Solutions Flyers. We have them up in the corner here. Wellness Solutions Flyers. You see towards that exit door, uh, right in front where Jamie is there. You need to pick up at least one of each of those. And we're also gonna pass off the uh, new book you guys get for free at the end. Okay, we have, th these are incredible because they're gonna remind you what you can do for a variety of conditions, whether it's blood sugar or weight loss, um, and of course, musculoskeletal problems. And then also, you, we'll provide them for free and you can pass them out to your patients. We'll even customize them, put your name, address, telephone number on, or you can just stamp it on there on the back. It's very good for compliance and it helps them to understand, helps you to understand uh, the rationale of the protocols. All right, now rebuild. You know, that's kind of phase uh, two of this thing. And we have had literally hundreds of people that were scheduled for knee replacement, hip replacement, elbow and shoulder surgery that averted these surgeries. I just had a friend who uh, fell off a bicycle. He's a UPS driver, and he ripped a bunch of tissue, so he really did need repair. He's going to be out of work for six months. And because it was not a work injury, his income's going to be about a third, plus he's in a lot of pain and he's bored senseless. What's he going to do for six months and he can't lift anything? I mean, he can't ride his bicycle or motorcycle. I mean, he has to be very careful uh, what he's doing. And so he's like bored senseless, plus he says this is a financial crisis for him because it's going to eat up all his reserves. Well, I told him he needs to be on the HA+. 
And the HA plus, we have this in capsules, which comes from biocell type two collagen, which is the patent ingredient that all the research was done on it, and all of the Me Too products are copying it, even though they don't have the patent ingredient. So it doesn't work as well. We have the HA plus powder, which is vegetarian for people like me, to rebuild cartilage, which is uh, including discs and uh, you know meniscus and the ends of bones. Also very good for skin. And you know, I'm of the generation where we, we, we want to look 40 when we're 90. I mean, I, I don't know if you can relate to that, but uh, we, we don't want to get old. And so HA Plus can actually help with your appearance with the collagen and the skin. Then we have the Power Fuel. I take this every day. I mix it in my Super Shake. Uh, this is an energy formula. So it's great for athletes, but it's great for people who have low energy or want more energy. When I was in Lake Como uh, with uh, Peggy and Charlotte Gerson, they introduced me to this wonderful family. They're vegetarian. The guy bicycles 500 to 1,000 miles trip. I mean, he went all the way from Lake Como to Rome, which is halfway across the country, on a bicycle. And the guy's 60, he looks about 40. And he said, what can I have for more energy? So I sent him some power fuel. So this is a great thing for fibromyalgia, chronic pain, uh, people who need energy. Cybzyme. Now the Cybzyme, if you take it with food, is gonna digest your food. But digestive enzymes that are taken between meals will get rid of the proteolytic uh, problems that you might have, the, uh, the uh, various chemicals that the proteolytic enzymes will help to break up. So if you took Cybzyme or Betazyme between meals, that will help with getting rid of the uh, pain cascade. So if you take it with meals like I do, it digests your food. If you take it between meals, it actually can help uh, with repair and rebuild of uh, injuries. Now we have the green lip muscle. This is another thing I recommend for anyone who has arthritis. The HA plus and the green lip muscle are axiomatic or, or obligatory. And then we have the omega 3D and you'll see the Roman numeral 2. And when we have Roman numeral 2 or 3 with products like Estra Cleanse and some of the other products, that means it's new and improved. We've done something. We've added uh, ingredients or, or we've uh, improved the ingredients, uh, maybe raised the uh, amount of ingredients uh, of each item. So the omega-3 D2, and we actually have research, these are researched oils, and of course totally toxin-free, which is another problem with oils. And I want to bring that story up because that's a story that uh, I love to tell and I think it's very important. You know, you have your patients, you're trying to convince them to take these products and they'll say, oh, I can get this at Kmart, Walmart, uh, drugstore, uh, multi-level, whatever. No, they're not gonna get the same products. They'll get something that's a copycat product and especially with fish oil, they may be getting mercury dioxin, PCP, and lead and poisoning themselves. Uh, you know, if, if they try to get uh, hyaluronic acid, but it's not the biocell type 2 collagen, it's not the ingredient that's been tested and is much more better absorbed. So you have to understand that. So the green lip muscle, I think, is for anyone who has joint problems, especially arthritis. Omega 3D has a lot of heart benefits, as you know, uh, with blood pressure and uh, preventing clots, uh, prevents inflammation, also very good for brain function. And I said I don't like the word stretching, just like I don't like the word physical medicine. You're not stretching anything. You know, if you put on, uh, let's say, a pair of underpants that has elastic and it's size 32 and you're now size 38, you're stretching it out and probably you're going to find, if you lose the weight, that thing has to go in the trash can. And that's where a lot of my underwear is gone as I've lost weight. Uh, we're not making the muscles longer than they're supposed to be. We're just getting rid of the kinks, the cramping, the, uh, the contraction of the muscles. So we're not really stretching them, we're relaxing them. So these are really relaxing exercises. I think we passed this out to you. Uh, did everyone get that? Because I saw that we had that available. Candace, did they get that? Because I saw them in the office, uh, these pictures. Okay, well, we do have the booklet here that Jamie's talking about, okay? These are things that people can do at home. 
because as I said, health is a do-it-yourself trip. We don't want people to be dependent upon us. The role of the doctor is to educate the patient. And then of course, food has a lot to do with it. That's why I passed out the food allergy thing. Uh, a lot of people are not eating fruits and vegetables. And people say to me, uh, yeah, I'll say, what do you eat? And they'll say, well, you know. <laughs> no, I don't know. Why would I be asking you if I knew what you eat? I, I don't know what you eat. I remember I had this one guy came in. He says, you know, I've been listening to you on the radio, and I totally changed my diet. And then I looked at his food journal that we had told him to make. And, and it was all like French fries and hamburgers and Coca-Cola. And I thought, what was this guy drinking and eating before? because I've never recommended that in my entire career. So people need to eat a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables. They get the antioxidants. Uh, they get the fiber. And all of these things are going to help with healing, as well as getting rid of toxins and detoxifying. Uh, nuts, seeds, butters, oil, beans, legumes. Uh, the body's 70, 80% water, so you've got to drink water. But, you know, if they're drinking distilled water, they have to make sure they have enough minerals, like the frontier minerals. And uh, then we do have, I guess you got this, which uh, is one of these wellness solutions flyers. And you can customize what you want, uh, you know, or add or subtract things. So that's uh, click to exit. I don't know. Click what to exit. Maybe that's it. All right, so the thing is that even if you're not a chiropractor, uh, there's a lot you can do for people's physical pain. And there is an interrelationship between the structure of the body and the functioning. I tried to give you that with the urinary bladder incontinence and all these other examples, uh, the thyroid, uh, the regular heartbeat, uh, that there is a relationship between this. And of course, then if people have pain and they start having psychological and emotional disturbances. It can affect their productivity and their social life, their personal life. And so it's all interrelated. Now, of course, uh, many of us take referrals from other practitioners. I, I know I refer a ton of people to Dr. Carey because as a medical doctor, he is licensed to do things that I am not. I had someone in this week, a cancer patient, you'll love this Dr. Carey. And, uh, uh, they said, well, if you're going to send me up there for intravenous vitamin C and peroxide and stuff, why don't you do it? I said, well, uh, I can't do it. It's not part of my license. I'm not trained in doing it. They said, well, why don't you just do it and don't tell anyone? <laughs> I said, I don't do that. First of all, I've never been trained in phlebotomy. Who knows what I would do if I start sticking that needle in something. And second of all, of course, it's illegal. And third of all, I'm on the radar for every agency you can think of, and I've been investigated uh, half a dozen times by everyone you can think of. So uh, that's all I would need to do is have one disgruntled patient or one enthusiastic patient call on the radio, say, wow, you know, that IV chelation you gave me, that IV vitamin C you gave me, and you know, it saved me a trip to Dr. Carey, and I'm really happy you're doing it now, Dr. Weiner, and you know, I'd be dead. So, you know, I'd be in the slammer. So we do refer to people who do complementary things with an E. You know, it's not complementary with an I, it's not free. And, and so we do work with other practitioners and I suggest, you know, those of you that are not into physical medicine, uh, which I don't like that term, but you know, uh, things like we do in our office, uh, we're not out to steal your patients. And we've had a number of chiropractors refer people in for specific things that we do, like the food allergies or muscle therapy that they don't do. And we're not trying to take their patients away. We tell them to go back whatever treatments they were getting from the uh, originating doctor, the referring doctor. All right, so we have a couple minutes, I believe, until uh, for questions. Uh, so if you have any questions, and you don't have to limit it, you know, you might want to find out about my cancer protocol or, uh, you know, what I do for various other things that we haven't discussed. Yes, Jamie. I got a lot of questions early today about how long you keep people on HA+. Plus. Well, uh, you know, we had that chiropractor friend of mine who called me up and told me he was going to have knee surgery over Christmas. And I told him, you know, you got the answer right in your closet behind you, uh, the HA+. Plus. So a month later, he called up and said, I don't know, my knee still hurts. Same, I don't feel any improvement. I said, well, healing's a process, not an event. Let's hear that again. Healing is a process, not an event, okay? You know, these people, these patients are used to the idea you... You take a Motrin and an hour later you don't have the pain. That's not healing. That's just 
you know, it's like a little kid saying, uh, you're not here. Well, you're here, they just can't see you, you know, so that's what you're doing is pretending that the problem's gone away just because the symptom's been suppressed. And the symptom is just a, like an alarm. It's like a smoke alarm telling you something's wrong. So after two months, he calls me and says, my knee still hurts. I said, healing's a process, not an event. I learned that when I say no, I feel guilty. There was a whole book called When I Say No, I Feel Guilty. Just, you know, you repeat certain phrases over and over again. Healing's a process, not an event. He calls me two weeks later, so that's week number 10. I can't believe it. Now I can play basketball with the kids, jump up and down. Uh, the pain's gone. Well, in his case, somehow, even though he was rebuilding, it took nine, 10 weeks for him to notice a dramatic symptomatic improvement. So everybody's different. So how long should they take the HA plus? Uh, if they have acute problem, I think they ought to be taking six a day or at least two or three scoops of the powder a day of HA plus and uh, at least three to six months. Some people continue to take it. And as I say, you know, it's just providing nutrients that your body needs and your body's constantly repairing and replacing every cell in your body. Uh, other questions? Yes? Would that HA plus be good for, um, along with building bone because of the collagen? Well, well uh, I don't know that it's specifically for building bones. We have a bone formula that we put together called SuperCal Plus. I think it would be good to take both if you're talking about building bones because cartilage is at the end of the bones. But I, I think that the, if you were going to choose between them, I would do the Super Cal Plus. And we have all the ingredients. We have the vitamin K2 in there. We have the magnesium. We've got boron. Uh, we have a lot of different things in that uh, Super Cal Plus. And, and, you know, that was, I think, one of the first products that I formulated because uh, the company I was using before, I had to give people three bottles because they didn't have any one bottle that had everything. And then there was an overlap of certain ingredients that were in more than one bottle. So I thought we have to streamline this and put together all the necessary nutrients in one pill. And that's what we try to do with the Candy Kill and the G Out and a lot of our products are combinations so people only need one bottle rather than four bottles. It's going to be cost effective plus it's easier to comply to take less pills. So I would say the Super Cal Plus if you're trying to build bones, but HA Plus wouldn't hurt. Other questions? Yes? Okay, cancer, generally what I tell people is to go on a vegetarian diet, um, no soy. Then we, ha we have a whole list, and if, if, if you come to our office or give me an address, I'll send it out to you. We have a list of supplements, and then I circle them according to what type of cancer. If it's prostate cancer, we'll tell them the prostate rest. If it's estrogen-fed uh, breast cancer, we'll put them on the EstroCleanse too. Uh, so, you know, it all depends. Uh, some of them are, we put everyone on the reds, greens, and purples because the reds, greens, and purples, I think, are better than eating food because you're getting 25, 30 different fruits and vegetables in an easily assimilated form. And so I think it substitutes for some of the juices of the Gerson program uh, to the reds, greens, and purples. Also, NRDMG, dimethylglycine, very, very important as a methylator and detoxifier. That's something you could probably do with the Hashimoto slash Graves disease person, DMG. Uh, you know, there's a lot of different products that we do recommend, and some of it's specific uh, depending upon what type of cancer. Yeah, did you have a question? Yes, muscle lax, does it have shellfish in it? Uh, no, it doesn't have shellfish. Yeah, yeah, I mentioned that. Maybe you missed that sentence. What happened was is we couldn't spell it the correct way, M-U-S-C-L, because someone else was using that name. So it's a little misleading because you think it's muscle like the shellfish, but it's actually a muscle like the muscles in your body. Yeah, so <clears throat> it's, a, it's basically a mineral and herbal formula. And I, I know that's a little confusing. Uh, I don't know, maybe we'll change the name on it at some point. The trouble is, by the time we get around inventing something, someone may have proprietized a name. That happened to me with my website. Someone bought up like the 100 most popular or 200 most popular doctor's names, so Dr. Weiner was taken. So I had a friend of mine buy it for $500, and then I gave him the $500, and I have drweiner.com now. 
If I had called, the guy would have found out my name was James Wire. He might have charged me ten thousand. So someone bought it up, and then, but now there's some other company making a product that has the word muscle in it, so we couldn't use it. Um, other questions? Good question. I haven't stimulated any thought. I've probably stimulated your appetite. Yes. Um, we have a woman who's eight weeks pregnant, and she has had significant morning sickness. Morning sickness. Uh, I, I would probably definitely put her on the reds, greens, and purples. She may be detoxifying, but you know what we have to do is uh, minimize the detoxification. Maybe the DMG, I think that's safe to take. Uh, you know, we have a prenatal vitamin that she ought to take. And uh, then I feel it's my obligation to talk to all pregnant women and families of young children about vaccines. And we have a lot of free information. Come to our office or call us, we'll send it out and you can duplicate it. I have these blue circular charts that I got from Dan in the back that show the vast majority of kids getting the measles, mumps, chicken pox, and whooping cough actually were vaccinated against them. I'm talking like 85, 95%. Uh, that's a killer uh, information there. Uh, websites, nvic.org, stuff that costs them nothing. So uh, yeah, but if, she, if she's having morning sickness, we usually think of that as a detox. Uh, I think maybe one or two live clear two a day would be safe. Uh, maybe not more than that, but one or two, the energy MG, the reds, greens, purples, and then of course the prenatal supplements. All right, a couple more questions. Anyone else? Uh, yes. Uh, what is the dosage for co-infection if someone's on a statin drug? If someone's on a cholesterol statin drug, uh, the question is the dosage for coenzyme Q10, as you people know, I'm sure, that one of the many hazards of the cholesterol medication drugs known as statins is that they interfere with the production of coenzyme Q10 and then that causes congestive heart failure. You're on Lipitor to trust your heart to Lipitor as the doctor says on TV and it actually ruins your heart. Uh, it causes cancer, Alzheimer's disease, muscle pain and weakness, something we should have mentioned here uh, that we didn't throw in that a lot of people are having musculoskeletal problems because of the drugs they're on. They're on antacids, they're not absorbing minerals, so they're lacking minerals. Uh, they're on cholesterol medication. There's uh, a lot of different medications that are creating uh, nutritional loss and a lot of symptomatology. I like the PowerQ-NOL because it's the ubiquinol form, and I would say minimum one a day, but probably two a day. And then we do have the Cholesto-Care too. First of all, is cholesterol good or bad? Yes. Cholesterol is a necessary nutrient. We'd all be dead without it. Your brain's like 50% cholesterol. The cell walls of the billions of cells of your tissues are made out of cholesterol. Your male and female hormones are made out of cholesterol. And Dr. Carey had something to share. You've heard this term, the French paradox, where you know, the American Heart Association is telling you to keep your cholesterol low, and yet in France they eat a lot of cholesterol, and yet they have almost no heart disease. So uh, Dr. Carey uh, wanted to share something about our, uh, our product. Uh, you mind doing that, Dr. Carey? After lunch. I'll bring the book in to show people. Uh, okay, but it's, it's our product that contains vitamin K2 and K2. vitamin D3. And A. And vitamin A. And, and he says this is the answer to the so-called French paradox because people in France are getting a lot of these nutrients in their food where we're not in the United States and it can actually reverse clogged arteries. So he's gonna bring in some book uh, that talks about this and we do have a product for that. Okay, one or two other questions and we'll run off to lunch. Uh, maybe we don't have any more questions, yeah. Do you think everyone should take minerals? Everyone is mineral deficient. We've lost the minerals in our soil. There's like 90 minerals and they're putting three back. So I think everyone should benefit, but now they have to be minerals that can be absorbed like the chelated minerals in our frontier minerals. You know, people say, oh, the doctor put me on calcium, calcium carbonate. Well, that's probably just gonna clog your arteries or cause uh, kidney stones. Or, or, or they'll say, the doctor put me on Tums. Well, you need stomach acid to absorb minerals including calcium and Tums stop it. Plus there's a lot of aluminum in Tums, so you know, it's, you know, it's calcium carbonate, it's all the wrong thing. So yeah, the proper minerals like the frontier minerals, I think most people would benefit from taking minerals. 
uh, and a lot of medications to pleat your body of minerals. Okay, well, we're going to sign off here. Thank you very much, and I'll be available, uh, as is the whole staff, during the lunch if you want to come up and ask us questions. Thank you very much for coming. And keep in mind, we do have this privilege of helping people, and we're empowered with knowledge that the conventional doctors don't know. And so it's really a privilege and honor and a thrill to be in this field. I'm happy you all came here today. God bless you. Thank you.